you've made it to Friday the 21st. What an exciting time to be alive. It's September 21st, 2018, and it's nonsense. Mostly nonsense. Some robot news, some other random stuff. Security. We're starting with security. Mm. And I can forgive you for thinking that we're starting with nonsense because you just saw the first headline. <laughs> and boy... When did we first, this started at like early 2016, right? When they came out with this? Yeah, we, we covered this when this database was happening and it was like, this is going to end very badly. And there were a lot of people that lived in India that thought that it would not end badly. Well, yeah. we, our predictions were exactly correct. They thought it was a very good thing. This was right around the time they were doing the, uh, they changed the money as well. They went cashless. The, the, the main point from the people that commented was that there is a lot of crime and fraud around the monetary system in India. And they thought this would probably help with that. And while that may be true, mm. that actually did not work out the way that you had imagined. <laughs> so maybe it's uh, helping with <laughs> fraud now. Yeah, so India's got this massive biometric database, but this simple workaround for it basically has turned it into a profitable counterfeit system. So all the criminals, the criminal element that you were talking about before, those years ago, has actually turned the biometric system into a tool to make it easier for them to be criminals. Oops. So you have these fingerprint readers, essentially is what they are, and, you know, computer software that goes with it. And they have these stations where you can add people to the database, obviously, because there's so many people in India. You can't, I mean, it's not like they're all going to come and check in at the government building. So they have these little outreach centers. And it turns out there is a very simple patch. You just overwrite some Java on the uh, software, and it allows anybody to operate as a trusted person on the system, meaning that those people that should be onloading new people into the biometric system, well, anybody can do it now. And it turns down the security sensitivity for the fingerprint and the iris scanner. So, for example, a printed out picture of an iris will now work. Which you can print out from the database. So you can create new identities as much as you want. Now, here's the crazy thing about this. You know, you talked about how the criminals were doing it, but it's not just the criminals because it turns out it costs something to run these systems. But when you use this patch, you can clone one over multiple workstations. <laughs> so even the legitimate places are running this patch, which dials down the security. Nice. It's very nice. <laughs> well, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, a lot, and it has... <laughs> So yeah, th this uh, it's, it's the welfare state is tied into this. Taxes are tied into this. So there's so many ways that you can Be cheat. Screwed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and unfortunately for iPhone users, there's yet another not catastrophic but annoying. <laughs> the TechCrunch is this great article where if you can have a website with malformed CSS and it will cause your phone to crash and restart because. Having CSS on your phone is obviously a critical system process thing worthy of restarting. And it's not just your web browser, but anything that displays HTML on your phone yeah. will be affected by this. Somebody could send you a naughty email and it would be bad. This is just uh, inside a, a certain piece of CSS, you can have too many nested items. And it causes your phone to run out of memory, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> You mean to tell me the new seven nanometer chips with all their magical insanity? You, you know, you can. It, it's it's not smart enough to realize. Come on, <laughs> not even billions of transistors per centimeter can defeat poorly <laughs> nested CSS. <laughs> uh, we talk about VPNs. It is the age of the VPN. If you don't have a VPN, uh, especially if you live in Europe, you're doing it wrong. Level one dot com slash support. Sign up for a VPN there. Uh, private internet access, I think, is the one we would always recommend, not just yes. because we have an affiliate link with them, but as we've said before, it has been proven in court <laughs> that they do not keep logs. So Turns out there's some flaws in some other VPN software, though, which yeah. allows you to run arbitrary code. So there have been patches deployed for Proton VPN and NordVPN, but the patches led to... The patches were kind of half-assed, which was not a complete fix. And so... If you have the software installed, somebody could send you a malicious file that when you open it, it'll execute with the VPN software, but the VPN software can be tricked into doing other things on your system. Yeah, it's an open VPN configuration file that is, uh, it run, in the old pre-patched version, it would run those without 
looking at them at all. It's just like, okay, I trust this. And it could be anything. So they fixed it, but just got to be careful about that kind of stuff. <laughs> but then it broke again, and then they fixed it again. So knock on wood, it doesn't sink into the swamp a third time. Now, I thought, putting together these stories, I was like, wow, are we going to get through a whole week with no Tesla news? <laughs> Is that There were a couple of derogatory uh, like financial, because they're coming up <laughs> on uh, another quarter, and apparently we're going to find out, it's like, are they keeping up with production? Are they actually selling all those cars? And so I was like, eh, I'm not going to put that in there. But then you, you got to talk about this, right? This is a great story. <laughs> Tesla's keyless entry is vulnerable to spoofing attack, researchers have found. So now's a good time to add a PIN code to your Tesla because you need that in addition to the keyless. Well, they did patch this, so I don't think it's as easy. What went on here is your, car, your Tesla is always broadcasting its ID and listening for the, the keyless entry. So if you use a mobile phone and get near the car and sniff that ID, you can then broadcast it from your phone. And if you can spend enough time within three or four feet of the fob, you can trick it into thinking you're the car and get the <laughs> full transaction. <laughs> what a time to be alive. So yeah, there was a report that somebody actually stole a Tesla from Mall of America using this attack wow. before it was fixed. <laughs> Of course, if you steal a Tesla, they can still shut it down remotely. And they know exactly where it is. Yeah, so you got to get to that chop shop real quick. And there's probably not a huge aftermarket. Just that market. one guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where was he? He was in the, like the Midwest somewhere, I yeah. think. So That's the only guy that can help you with your criminal enterprise. <laughs> yeah. But if you can do that, that's good money. So And pretty easy to do. <laughs> well, this, this is a little bit of a... A terrible headline and uh, it was a little bit of hyperbole here but not a lot actually uh, almost all modern computers are affected by a cold boot attack researchers warn so this is any any computer that has like a suspend or hibernate function or, or anything like that because the encryption keys are stored in memory you can just shut the computer down take the memory out and put it in somewhere else and still read it yeah and this has always been a problem but this is a sort of a new vector into yeah. doing this. It's something they've just discovered. So they, you know, if you're going to travel or something like that, the recommendation is shut it all the way down. You got to get rid of any kind of charge that's in that memory. And uh, any kind of residual or make sure that it's not sleeping as opposed to it's turned off and a lot of, a lot of stuff. I think, um, I think that encrypted memory is going to be the norm within a generation or two. Because uh, it talks about how, like, people, if you've got an Apple that uses the T2 chip, which makes it impossible to recover stuff from your flash drive or memory, um, that it would not be affected. And it's because the T2 stores the encryption stuff, the encryption key for everything. But that's also why if your computer dies and you were to take the SSDs out of it, that it's still basically unrecoverable because the, you can't take the encryption chip off the motherboard without desoldering and things get weird. And they're talking about having your laptop stolen. But think about if you're traveling. What yeah. about the, remember in Australia, they yeah. took the guy's laptop we'll just, yeah. and just well, wouldn't give it back. I mean, if it's in the law, Apple would put a thing in there where it's like, if government, then dump is a thing through the USB ports. Like that will be legislated and that will be done, which is a scary future. That'll be uh, Article 15. <laughs> we talk about Cody a lot. Cody is the, uh, basically it's a, a, a media player that is fine by itself but we'll accept some questionable plugins. And it turns out that the malware people have caught on that questionable plugins being a, a thing is like, oh, we can do more with that. <laughs> so if you've installed add-ons from the Bubbles, Gaia, or XVBMC repositories, you might have been infected with a coin miner because I guess it, the article's not really clear on if it was a compromise or if it was just malicious extensions. No, yeah, it was just... Uh, there's just certain extensions. It wasn't Cody itself. No, no. I mean, I don't mean Cody itself. Just like the, I, like the extension repository may have been. Oh, you mean the extensions themselves? Yeah, that's a good question. So, but it's funny. It shows. I think uh, they estimated that these people might have made like seven thousand dollars <laughs> because it shows how the cryptos are just crap. This is Monero. Yeah. And the altcoins are the ones suffering the most in the current crypto apocalypse. 
Somebody, some whale is keeping Bitcoin above 6,000, it looks like, because every time it looks like it's going to go below 6,000, there's a, there's a large order that comes in. Uh, yeah, I, I wonder, like, are we just finding the real value of crypto? I think if more stuff used Bitcoin as a means of value exchange, um, the price would be more stable. But as it is right now, I, you know, there there have been barriers erected that makes it more as a value exchange on the criminal element and gambling when you're not supposed to side of things than buying stuff from Overstock or Newegg or Amazon or wherever. But I also wonder, because every kind of alternative money has systematically been destroyed over the years. Yeah. And they didn't get to them right away. They got to them usually after they started to skyrocket in value because, you know, the central bank money is essentially valueless compared to real something that actually holds value. <laughs> so I wonder if it just took it's like, oh, this is getting out of control. Destroy it. I wonder if the Winklevi have a blog because their insights on it could be good because they might be the whale. They might be the ones that are because they're heavily invested in Bitcoin. But they were in Bitcoin when it was like five hundred dollars a coin. Yeah, well, that's just getting lucky. I don't think that's that's not financial acumen. No, it's yeah, a, but if they're bitching about, you know, it's like these guys in black suits showed up and threatened to beat us with a tire iron unless we did X, Y, Z. Definitely, it would be a nail gun. <laughs> there might be a blog post about that. Well, moving on to the robots and artificial intelligence, we now have a new robot, and it's a robotic fly. And it dips and dives just like the real thing. There he is. He looks pretty simple, doesn't he? <laughs> Not very impressive. <laughs> Small. That's, that's kind of cool. So the uh, the idea here, almost all of our robotic flying objects have a tail. So when you have a tail, you know, it moves the air across the tail and it stabilizes you. Flies don't have tails. They're just little little nuggets with wings. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They've replicated that. It just sort of like randomly ends up somewhere. Yeah. But they talk about how you don't, the, the way it's mapped is a lot of the movements of the fly are sort of like uh, functions or scripts. Mm. So when you move the controller, instead of saying move this wing, it's saying execute maneuver B, <laughs> which ends up taking it where you want it to go. It's sort of like in a corkscrew, like not super controlled, but kind of controlled pattern. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, you know, that some authors are accused of being poor writers purely because of the volume that they crank out. You know, I mean, Stephen King wrote a lot of books. <laughs> He's still and, writing a lot of books. Two and, a year, uh, two what, a year. Who's the, the female author? Uh, Danielle Steele. Oh, I or thought you it, were going to say the Harry Potter author. But she hasn't she stopped? No, she's still doing stuff in the, in the universe. She's trying to figure out how to do like prequels and side stories and stuff. But, but that, she's... Stephen King's wrote hundreds of books, right? I yeah, mean, he does two a year still. She's she's nowhere near him. But anyway, a lot of people claim that that makes it, uh, you know, it should be quality over quantity. But that's certainly not the case for the Chinese algorithm. So this is the Chinese algorithm. This is to do with Alibaba, I think is what I gathered. Yeah, right to their product descriptions. And so I was reading this article and I had, a, I had a genius idea. We need to get with them, get a copy of their algorithm and put a garage sale app on the Apple App Store. So you just take pictures of all the crap in your garage and it'll automatically separate out all the items, write the descriptions for you and get that on Craigslist. That would be very difficult because <laughs> and all, AI. What, one of the things it's doing with Alibaba is it knows where that thing came from. Yeah. So it'll go to their manufacturer website yeah. and try to track down their which description. Is, which is amazing. But yeah. I think, I mean, you could take a picture of all the random crap in somebody's garage and probably track down the manufacturer of that based on the manufacturer's own photos. I mean, hey, I could probably do that. That would be hilarious. Now, the other thing that it would do that people would hate is it would probably come up with a realistic value. Yeah. Which is not something you get at garage sales. <laughs> I'm just imagining a future where it's like, I don't I don't need all the stuff in my garage. I'm just going to take out everything that I intend to keep and just leave everything in the garage. And then just like you, like the panorama function on your phone, you just spin around and let it, let it take a picture. And then over the next few days, just random people show up at your house. And it's like, hi, I'm Bob. I'm here to buy the whatever. And it's like, what? What are you talking about? And so your AI assistant has like done everything and haggled over the price. And it's like, no. Oh. <laughs> but see, here's here's where your rose-colored glasses come into play, because you never think about the dark side. How about when I break into your home 
and I'm not sure what the most valuable thing is to steal. <laughs> Google glasses for thieves. Yeah, exactly. Pro criminal tip. Or just take that same panorama shot, you know, and then it's like, you wait 30 seconds, and then it pops up a list sorted by value. <laughs> It's like, oh, here we go. I'll take this. There's a here's a here's a rookie Mickey, Mickey Mantle baseball card over in that pot over there. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, you think they'll have stuff like that on the dark web, like the dark web AI? It's like this is the they're most- working on it as we speak. I'm sure. <laughs> as soon as that announcement came out about the Alibaba bot, they were like, oh yes, we'll do that. Well, when I I I think we did a story about a, a self driving motorcycle once before, and I asked who would want a self driving motorcycle. They don't have carrying capacity. The point of a motorcycle is to drive the motorcycle. But it turns out that they're not even, like, this is not supposed to be a thing. This is just to build safety features. <laughs> this is a BMW working on a riderless motorcycle. It works. The only thing it can't do is get started on its own. But this little guy, he'll, he drives around a track very quickly and... Uh, so they want to use that to try to figure out, like, oh, I guess it's driving aids. If the motorcycle can literally drive itself, then it can keep you from dying. We need to get the team that's working on this together with Grant Imahara, who was working on that stunt robot that we covered a few weeks ago. I want to put the stunt robot on the motorcycle and just have unbelievable motorcycle stunts in movies from now on. But the mo- how much does the stunt robot weigh? <laughs> like two tons? <laughs> I'm not sure if a motorcycle can handle that. I mean, it's like the motorcycle hits a trampoline and bounces into the air and is spinning in over in, and Grant Imahara's robot, you know, takes up the Superman pose or whatever. It makes some really interesting cinema. But the whole point of watching those stunts is you're hoping it goes wrong, right? There has to be that risk. If there's no risk, who cares? Well, our next technology could help with faking it, maybe. Well, we talked about deep fakes earlier in the week. I don't remember which day, which day it was, but the government is finally waking up <laughs> to deep fakes, and they're saying we need a countermeasure. But it turns out they're already improving beyond the existing countermeasures. I didn't find these as impressive as I did the first round, honestly. Well, these aren't supposed to be technically accurate as much as they're now copying the mannerisms mm. of the source rather than just the face, which it's kind of amazing. I'm sure they'll put the two together in some sort of unholy union. They also, for whatever reason, they've applied it to flowers. They've made one flower bloom like the other flower. I, Why? Who are we faking? <laughs> <laughs> I thought the point of doing the different faces with the deep fakes was to show that you could take one person and make them say something else, the same person. But what they're doing is showing how easy it is to make one person make someone else say something, which I think are different things. Well, it would all be useful. Yeah, your disinformation campaign. And of course, the Russians are definitely going to use this to disrupt the election in November. Gosh, can you imagine, uh, like, you know, r- take that technology and replay the last election and just have stuff like, like the Pizzagate stuff happening, but with like video of like the Hillary human soup thing and like the Pizzagate thing and like actual videos with uh, people will be like, I saw the video. It yeah. looked pretty real. The, it's just well, totally fake. The, uh, the, uh, the author of this article, uh, Melanie Erinkrans. <laughs> Ermin Trout. Oh, she, uh, she was very one-sided with yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And, and she was like, oh, so now people are on the right are going to have a way to deny the horrible things they said. They're just going to claim it was a deep fake. <laughs> But the politicians, you know, they, I bet they'll try that Yeah, once or twice. I'd say that I'm surprised it hasn't already happened. Maybe it has. Maybe somebody in the chat can point out the, or the, the uh, YouTube comments can point out the, um, somewhere that has actually already been done. Because if it's not been done, I guarantee you it's going to be done. Like so something is going to go viral that was totally fake. We need a, so you can have a little mobile screen that you put up next to whoever's speaking and play one of those anti-AI animations yeah just to keep it honest we need to we need captain disillusion to do uh some videos on on deep fakes maybe we can use the presidential alert system to have the entire population go watch some of his videos about debunking fake videos so that everybody can think for themselves yeah people don't want to do that no they also don't want killer robots at least the meps and the eu don't but so, it turns out a lot of the other country, other countries kind of do. <laughs> so does that mean we're not going to use uh, drones on the battlefield anymore? The U.S. is not part of this. 
Oh, okay. We, we, we well, were like, sorry, we, no. We, we've sold our drones to people in the in the EU, so. Well, those aren't uh, fully autonomous, mm-hmm. so they're not killer robots. But, they, I mean. No, it has to be, as long as there's somebody with a joystick, you're good. Okay. okay. So, yeah, they're saying that uh, we need to ban, and they have banned their countries from developing killer robots. But this is crazy because if one group is using killer robots, you have to. What if you have a robot that's not a killer robot, that is, is itself not capable of taking a life, but it's a robot that deploys landmines, which well, are if, then capable of taking a life? What about those uh, robots that were killing the starfish? Uh, those just are a, autonomous. Just yeah. a little bit of adjustment. And they'll go after divers. You know they would. <laughs> wow, that would imagine uh, patrolling your coast against divers. You know, coming up on the shore to like you know sneak into your country or whatever with just an army of those. That would be uh, that's a scary weapon of war. Be bad for your tourist industry. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> it's war war time. Don't go swimming. I mean, uh, yeah. So I think uh, the first time the killer robots storm a beach. All the anti-killer robot countries will be like, oh, we need to rethink that. <laughs> Maybe we should get some of those. Uh, we, well, Facebook, we talked about Facebook. Uh, you know, they're watching our memes. They're using the character recognition on the pictures. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're coming for our software engineering jobs. Yeah, you know, they're testing the videos. And now their AI can even fix its own bugs. I wonder what kind of bugs these have to be. They seem, it seemed to be describing like user interface bugs. And at the high end, one of them will try like mutations where it'll modify the code a little bit to try to see if it can find something that fixes the bugs. But I really wonder what kind of bugs they're creating that have that they're able to do this because it doesn't say. And I really want to know what kind of bugs they are. Can you imagine that? Uh, it, so it's your job. There's there's some compounded bug that has resulted from three or four. Mutation fixes, and it's your job to go in and pull that spaghetti apart and find out what actually happened. How frustrating is that going to be? It's going to be like working with regular Facebook code. It's like, oh, the Facebook API is not working today. That's like you ever see those pictures where uh, they'll pull paint off a wall, and it looks like it's like twenty. It's like a, a rainbow of layers where they just paint it over and over and over. Oh. Uh, Wow, I can't believe that color was popular in the 1960s. That's yeah. what the developers going to think when they encounter those bugs. That, those poor bastards at Facebook are going to run into that. I feel for them. <laughs> I mean, they deserve it. They work at Facebook, but it's going to be a bad day. I think I think our next story from Popular Mechanics is one of the ones that I'm most excited about in several weeks of the Level 1 news. This is, I really want, you think they'll ever tell us? I would love to know. Yeah, so there was this uh, Sun Observatory. They came in with a helicopter. <laughs> like so why would you have to gas up the helicopter to go here why is so time sensitive that you have to evacuate the sun observatory with a helicopter i don't know but the fbi mysteriously closed the new york or the new mexico observatory for the sun and they're not letting people back in that was on september 6th and the local sheriff is like we don't know why what's going on but they won't let us in yeah and this is, I mean, observing the sun is certainly not, that's not the only place that can do that. There are other places that can observe the sun. They are nearby a missile testing facility. So probably the most obvious answer is something got out of hand. Maybe they were testing a, a new munition or something that had bioweapons or something like that. <laughs> but of course, the conspiracy theorists are just... It's aliens. They're, they're, they've lost their minds with this. The best theory, in my opinion, is that our uh, alien overlords needed to refuel, which, of course, they used the sun for. And so no one could witness that. So none of the other sun observatories are in a position to see that? Maybe they just... Not high enough resolution? Or they don't know what this observatory... Like, this observatory has been debriefed Uh. on the aliens. Of course, if that was true, why would you hide it from them? Maybe only some of them have. Maybe only, like, high-ranking people there. I wonder what the, the chief scientist in that is like. Do they even know? And it's like, oh, no, no, we're not. You think they're getting paid for this downtime? Did anybody in the audience go ahead and send a FOIA request? If so, let us know <laughs> like, when, you hear, when you hear back from that. <laughs> in uh, 2025. <laughs> 2037, probably. 
Uh, now, this one, you know, as we've said before, we'll sneak in some non-tech stories and nonsense. Just, you know, just slide them in there. Make sure you're paying attention. But this one, a lot of the times, every time we talk about some dystopian thing, <laughs> you always come back with, we need better education. And you're, you're right. You're not wrong. But again, the rose-colored glasses, like, how do we get there? And this story is kind of showing that things might be going in the other direction. Uh, teens are protesting in-class presentations. Some students say having to speak in front of the class is an unreasonable burden for those with anxiety and are demanding alternative options. I feel like that when I was in school, everybody complained about protesting in front of the class. Of course, yeah. But it was like tough nuggets did yeah. anyway. That's part of life. I mean, neither of us could do our jobs without from time to time <laughs> speaking in front of a group of people. Yeah. And I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. You have to communicate <laughs> ideas <laughs> to, so, to sometimes hostile people and you still have to be able to do it. So the, the militantly like, stupid, like they're saying, Hey, anxiety is a handicap, I guess. And it's just not fair because you know I'm going to be bad at this, so don't try to make me do it. Anxiety can be a crippling handicap, but it is not for a vast majority of the population. But also, like, if that's the case, isn't shouldn't part of education be identifying your failures so that you can work on them? Yeah. So, yeah. Improve. You fail. <laughs> if you have crippling anxiety, you can't get in front of people, and getting in front of people is a part of the world, you should know that you're bad at that. You should be, <laughs> you should be graded. On your abilities. Uh, now, here's the story I did a great intro for, but I did it at the wrong time. I'm not going to do it again. But <laughs> basically, it sucks that sports stadiums are named after corporations. And what's the darkest timeline of that? That's this. <laughs> it's Haley's comment. I mean, the uh, Allstate comment. <laughs> you think they'll name <laughs> Heavenly Objects? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, oh, there's a... Uh, it's it's not the North Star anymore. That's the Coca Cola Star. Uh, how much <laughs> you think it would? Uh, well, now, of course, the ISS that's international. Maybe you could name different pods. <laughs> it's like oh, I'm, I'm heading over to the uh, Kellogg's pod instead of the space shuttle, like the the Columbia and the Enterprise. We've got the uh, <laughs> you know the space shuttle. It's like a beefaroni. <laughs> yeah. So they're talking about spacecraft and things like that. But I bet they'll go down to like individual rocket tubes. Oh yeah. <laughs> It'll be like, uh, you this know, is the Lehman brothers launch. Tube. <laughs> 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 but not only that, they're talking about, um, they're going to lift the ban on astronauts doing endorsement deals. Oh yeah. That's a thing. I forgot that was a thing. Wow. Nike in space. I wonder if they'll let them put like the Nike stickers on their helmet or whatever. Well, they talk about currently that is totally against the rules, even to the point where they won't admit that the astronauts really like to eat M&Ms in space. <laughs> they won't call them M&Ms. They call them coated chocolate candies. <laughs> now, I've got the first endorsement. Do you remember the astronaut who wore the adult diaper to drive cross country and kill her cheating boyfriend? <laughs> It was one of the first episodes of the Level One News. That uh, those adult diapers. Imagine with her picture on there, <laughs> with, like holding a gun. That's like stop for nothing. That'll be the tagline. <laughs> Follow your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love. Have you seen those uh, those fake Colin Kaepernick? Uh, yeah, but yeah. like instead of him, it's some horrible murderer. Yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> those are so good. Ah, here's one that you alluded to earlier. And this one, I just, I thought it was, it was funny enough to put in nonsense because <laughs> how would you like a tiny, tiny phone for your teeth? <laughs> you got to scroll down and show them the picture of that because the whole time I was reading this was like, you know, no, 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 it's not, you got to keep going. It's this, like the, oh, no, yeah. that doesn't do you any good. Yeah, there you, go. Thing, there you go. So it's like, yeah, it's inside your mouth. And that's actually just the like the microphone and and speaker part of it. it there's a, another little thing you wear on your belt that actually takes care of the communication. So it's like a low power radio frequency to that thing. And then, you know, yeah, you hear it in inside your head, like when you're chewing cereal is how the article describes it. Yeah, it's well, they've got the jawbone ones, but I don't think your teeth work as good as your jawbone. No, 
So you're going to, they say that the first day you use it, you should be able to understand maybe, but it'll take about three weeks for your mind to adapt to hearing voices from your teeth. <laughs> Unless you're schizophrenic and then you've got a huge jump start on the new technology. This is uh, only going to be for the military at first. If you're excited about having tooth uh, communications. They talk about them using it underwater, and of course it is uh, waterproof, but how would you talk underwater? That would have to be one way, right? I would think, I mean. Well, here's a great headline. And when you get down into the story, it's a little bit less preposterous, but what a fantastic headline. Netflix tells court that it isn't a video service provider, so this has to do with taxes. It's like Mississippi, I think, or Missouri. They want to collect taxes. There's, it's like a, a local area. They, the local area collects taxes from cable TV providers. And so a lot of people are ditching cable TV and going with Netflix. It's hurting these local municipalities' revenue because they're not getting as much taxes. So they told Netflix, we want 5% of your gross revenue. Jesus Christ, that is a lot. And uh, that is your, you know, your tax for, for whatever and uh, for video service providing. But the, the law specifically excludes... Uh, people that provide video services on the internet, but Netflix says they're not a video service provider in the context of this law. They are a streaming provider, which is actually mentioned in the law and is specifically excluded. Yeah, I think Netflix is right. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they're right in saying they're not a video provider. That's a bit of a hyperbolic headline. But they are right that this probably shouldn't apply to them. Yeah. And I think the problem is these, this state was so used to getting that sweet paycheck every year and all of a sudden they're like wait wait what happened what's what's going on with the budget oh no one has cable anymore <laughs> oops so a lot of times you know you you wonder like are we really is it really that much of a conspiracy between the state and the the telecoms yes yeah, sometimes it is <laughs> because they have these sweetheart deals and i bet some you know they made these deals to it's like oh hey you give us subsidy money We'll kick back 5%. Uh, 5% of the gross revenue is also, it's set up for like an infrastructure company because like for tax purposes, your gross revenue would not include like your costs of uh, keeping up your infrastructure and stuff like that would be taken out of that. But for a lot of modern internet companies, there are a lot of costs that don't come out of the gross, the gross profit line. So like 5% of your gross profit would probably be crippling for Netflix. But also, if they rule that Netflix is whatever this is, and they get charged that 5%. What about Amazon? Because yeah. how do you or decide? Hulu like, or... But if, if it's just the Prime Video portion of Amazon, except that comes as a free option with your Prime subscription, how do you decide how much of a Prime subscription is the Prime Video? I like how the article also mentioned this was attempted in Kentucky and failed because it was dumb. Can't confirm. A lot of real dumb stuff in Kentucky tax law. But it was like five to two. Yeah. So we had two judges who <laughs> wanted that money, I guess. Uh, well, how about women in games? Man, we need more women in games, right? Well, <laughs> they decided to do an award show just for themselves, and something interesting happened. A man has won the Best Presenter Award. But the article <laughs> also mentioned there were only two women presenters. So... Uh, yeah, this I don't I don't know what the whole story. I would have to watch the whole thing, and I just didn't have the will to oh, live no, to do that. There's no way that I'm ever going to watch that. But it is. There was a lot of whining in the story. Yeah, and I don't think the best way to get women into gaming is to build a little walled garden for the women to game in. <laughs> How about we just pick up a controller and get into it? You know, and, and yeah, people are going to insult you. But they insult us too. What, <laughs> do you know how many times that your your sexuality and your mother's promiscuity will be questioned in a given online gaming session? Rather that's, a lot. That's just something that just goes along with it. You'll be called racial slurs that don't even apply to you. Pardon me, sir. Do you have any extra five five six ammo? Oh, oh my. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, that's interesting. But uh, I do. I, I mean, I think it's 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 nice when women get into gaming, and we're yeah. seeing more of that. I don't, I don't think there's much of a. I think women interpret just the natural vitriol of gaming 
to be directed. as being chauvinistic. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure what they're saying is very chauvinistic, but you hit, you try to find the weak point, right? Like you take whatever <laughs> someone might be insecure about and you go after that. It's funny when we play online with Krista and the other people think she's a 12 year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, she's teabagging and <laughs> trolling and throwing smoke grenades when it's not necessary. There's a good reason that you might think that she's a 12 year old boy besides the high pitched voice. Uh, we've talked about AI quite a bit and AI, you know, they're doing all this learning. And one thing that AI is not good at is uh, contextual conversation. <laughs> Such as sarcasm, but they're working on it. <laughs> oh, they're working. Oh, they're trying. Uh, that was that was not sarcasm. But uh, the register article is filled with lots of sarcasm, talking about AI trying to understand sarcasm, sarcasm, and also to reproduce it, and how difficult that is. And they've decided Reddit is the best place for that. Wasn't that also the best place to where like the AI learned to be just the most hateful, evil thing ever? Yeah, yeah, they had that one AI. <laughs> That. Oops. So the idea is the Reddit comment threads. This, <laughs> well, that's a great. Yeah, the, this AI goes into the Reddit comment thread and it needs to be able to read a comment and then read up and down and try and figure out context and identify, is this sarcasm? I wonder what the numerical score is for both sarcasm and also toxicity. Because remember we had that, that other article about the AI. Google's, was, yeah. Yeah, give you the numerical score for toxicity. That'd be funny if we get to the point where online forums have like a sarcasm limit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your comment was rejected. It's too sarcastic. <laughs> Krista, your control key has been throttled. Excessive teabagging detected. Uh, and sort of uh, in the same vein of the women gamers, this, this just makes me sad. <laughs> When things like this happen. The Python's a little late to the party here, but they've, uh, they've joined the movement to dump the offensive master and slave terms. So, and then they've got a picture of an ancient IDE hard drive where, you know, it took a parallel ribbon cable and you could do CS for cable select or slave or master. But okay. When I, I even back in the IDE days, I never once looked at my hard drive or when I was setting up a slave drive <laughs> and thought to myself, yeah, the South will rise again. Well, that was that never came into my mind. The idea of owning humans in comparison <laughs> with writing Python or hooking up a hard drive. You know, I'm thinking about a lot of my old system builds, and, and in a lot of cases, the slave drive was technically superior to the master drive. The master drive was typically the first drive in the system. It was smaller. It had the operating system on it, that kind of thing. The slave drive was larger, typically newer and faster. If you were going to lose a drive, it was almost always cheaper to lose the master. Yeah. Because that's because your media is on the slave drive. Yeah. So what, what is just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about Python to tell you where slave and master is used. Maybe in like the service API part of it. But again, like having, I mean, I've, I've used Python for stuff and I'm sure that I've probably run across the master and slave terminology, but it's never like, it's like, you know, where was slavery involved in Python? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like you, you, you understand it for what it is in the context of what you're doing. You don't get to it and think about, mm, I would like to own another human. <laughs> How convenient would that be? So, does, does the primary drive in the system own the secondary drive? I mean, is that... That's not a I, thing. I, it gives it orders, I guess. Uh, it doesn't... Not really. But, you know, it's a, that's, a, that's a chain of command. Is the chain of command somehow offensive? It's like, you can't command me. I'm a free, I'm a free person. Like, where do you draw the line? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's it's terrible, but yeah, the Drupal did it not too long yeah. ago, and um, was it the didn't Git do something with that? Yeah, yeah. But there have been several different ways in which masters and whitelist and blacklist. Oh yeah, whitelist and blacklist have yeah. been uh, have been destroyed. But again, I feel like it's more racist to look at those terms in that context and see racism. Because that means that your your mind is constantly looking for racism rather than just understanding that these mean something else in this other context. Well, this we always try to choose uh, the most ridiculous or the most <laughs> interesting nonsense story to end on. And I got to tell you, if you're like me and you're terrified 
of the gay frogs taking over. <laughs> there goes the monetization again. Finally, finally, you can fight back. You can now genetically engineer your own mutant frogs for four ninety nine. So they will send you a kit with frogs that you inject stuff directly into their liver, and it causes them to bulk up. Well, you should mention, you, not only do you get frogs, you get a little enclosure for your frogs, Liter and you get food. Uh, literally everything that you need yeah. to conduct your own genetic this experiments at home. All in one. And <laughs> this is from a guy who has injected himself with CRISPR-modified genes on Twitch. Seems like a great way to raise funds, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so for 500 bucks, and so you're saying, what can I do with these frogs? Well, the stuff he sends you is already modified to make your frogs look super ripped and buff. He was able to increase the size of his frogs, like the, the massive gains, 23%. <laughs> and the control group only grew by 2%. So, so $500 yeah. seems like a good, maybe we should, you know, level one Patreon stretch goal, like the frog <laughs> experiment. Well, I I've always wanted an island of Dr. Moreau. I don't want to abuse the little frogs. That's the <laughs> only thing. You, know, you got to inject their livers, and I'm sure they don't enjoy that. The article goes out of its way to point out that the animal cruelty laws don't apply to amphibians. Yeah, anything cold-blooded. I didn't know that was true. That's interesting. So, totally legal as far as anybody... I mean, I'm sure somebody in Congress is furiously writing something up for this, don't you think? <laughs> well, more importantly, it's like how did it, like somebody playing with CRISPR at home is accidentally going to un unleash something really bad. <laughs> well, that guy's injecting himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's you know presumably that doesn't you know it's not transmittable. But what if we were using CRISPR on like mosquitoes or something? How hilarious that it's legal for you to genetically modify something and inject it into yourself. <laughs> But totally, totally, I will destroy you and your family if you grow a plant and inject that <laughs> into yourself. Or just inhale it. You don't inject it even. Well, some oh, yeah, I guess do. you could inject it. Yeah. Well, I'm, no, not weed, but I'm saying like, you know, opium. Oh, poppies. opium. Yeah. Forgot about opium. Well, that's a big one. That's a big can't one. Can't forget about that one. <laughs> Like, you can't forget about the Level 1 store. Yeah, you can own your favorite Level 1 merchandise from store.level1. I don't know. We'll see you next week. We've had, uh, we've got a couple of shirts pending. We do have a couple of our, shirts pending. But our shirt person is, uh, she's slow to produce. <laughs> she's glamping. She's off glamping <laughs> instead of doing something, you know, productive. We've had a run on uh, our mouse mats. Our mouse mats have basically sold out. So we're looking for to do some new designs for that as well. The, the hard drive, the black hard drive desk mats and the patent mats have sold really well. Everybody wanted us to do that uh, sex toy patent. Remember that thing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I, vaginal. I think uh, I think Linus beat us to the hilarious sex-related shirt. He's got a, a shirt that's uh, RTX on, and there's an arrow that points down, and it, that's he's he's going to sell a lot of those. Don't advertise somebody else. <laughs> What's wrong with you? We'll see you next week. <laughs>